We are back on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk, 1180, 1230, KGEO, 1410, KERI, and now in Albuquerque, New Mexico at 1000 KKIM. Our guest in studio, one of our favorite people, Assemblywoman Shannon Grove. Very favorite people. Yes, no question about it. So, Shannon, one question I had for you was regarding the uh, minimum wage being raised to $10 an hour. Well, that's over a two-year period, though, too. Well, it still. is over a two-year period, but it's, it goes from um, where it goes from eight dollars to nine dollars to ten dollars so it's so it's insanity on the installment plan because it's going to take two years to do but it's nuts i I was reading this morning uh thomas Sowell's reader which is a great book i really love it he was talking about minimum wage and he said nowhere in history has raising the minimum wage ever increased jobs and he talked about the first time they came up with the minimum wage at that time the minority community had less unemployment than the white community did and once we started the minimum wage, it flipped and reversed, and it's been downhill ever since for the minority community. Fascinating. It, you know, I, I read that article that he put together for that. Um, but the way you increase wages, the way an entrepreneur or business owner or someone who has worked in the real world increases wages is the same way that North Dakota does it. Where would they work again? <laughs> in the real world? You know, if you've worked in the real world, then you get it. Right. But so North Dakota, you look at McDonald's in North Dakota. They're paying 15 to $18 an hour and doing a $300 signing bonus if oh. you stay. Why? Because there are so many jobs mm-hmm. that people are competing for higher wages for their employers or the employers are competing and paying higher wages so that they retain the employees Mm -hmm. you know they don't they're opposite of california we drive out business Mm -hmm. and demand that the business that's here is regulated higher and pay higher taxes another thing is is that people don't look at people go oh it's just from eight to ten dollars an hour but it also affects your salaried employees because salaried employees have to be double the paid double the minimum wage everything that is associated with the you know fica federal food asuti edd workers comp liability insurance epl you know all that insurance is all all tied to that wage. So the higher your payroll is, the higher those costs are. So it's not just a dollar an hour this year. It's like a dollar ninety an hour this mm-hmm. year, and then next year it's two, you know four dollars an hour, because um, the cost associated with doing business is all tied to the wage. And it also increases the expenses to all the consumers because the exactly. employers have to pass this on to somebody. Oh, exactly, sure. they're not going to pay it. No, no, and and it's amazing. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've already, I've already talked to three employers this week that said they're going to go out of business. There's just no way they can or do it. Or reduce staff. Or reduce staff. But I if mean, you're you a no very small employer and you have three employees and they do make minimum wage and now you can only afford to pay for two of them, then exactly. one person loses their job. Yeah. How, how does this impact uh, a company like Continental Labor? Um it, Continental kind of labor makes is is um, we don't pay anybody minimum wage, so there's really no impact to us in that area. So okay. we we don't pay anybody minimum wage. Um, we don't have any minimum wage payments. Do any of the uh, temporary staffing agencies pay minimum wage? If they, yeah, I'm, I'm sure they do. And if they do pay minimum wage, then they would just have to increase their wages and then increase the cost of billing to their customers, and then their customers would increase the cost of billing to their customers, and it eventually falls down to the consumer. You know, Shannon, you you've got to be faced with this every single day you're up there, and I, I know you do. A great job with this but it's amazing how they take policies up there that don't work and they double down on them (laughs) i mean it's insane it is and and you've got to deal with this every single day i mean i just somebody asked me on a on i did another radio show sorry guys a Uh couple of days ago and somebody called in a caller called in and said you know how can you explain what governor brown's thinking in in him process for the bathroom bill or the the transgender bill and then also on the minimum wage bill and i said i I don't know i don't speak brownies i i don't (laughs) i don't i have no i don't have an answer for you because i don't understand why they would do that Amazing. Our guest in studio, a friend of the show, Assemblywoman Shannon Grove. You know, Shannon, moving on a little bit here, um, our Democrat Rudy Salas has passed several bills since he's been up there, and he's really touting himself as somebody that's getting the job done. And you haven't passed a lot of bills. Can you tell me why? (laughs) I haven't been able to get one bill out. They didn't like my um, local regional uh, minimum wage, or excuse me, my local regional prevailing wage. Right now, the prevailing wage in in, um, California is set out of Sacramento. But, you know, to live in Sacramento is a lot more expensive than to live in Inyo Kern or Ridgecrest or Bakersfield. So I wanted a local area to be able to set the prevailing wage. They didn't like that. They didn't like my school choice bill, allowing um, the dollars that are funded for students to be able, parents to be able to let that dollar follow the student you know why is somebody in east
East L.A. or or East Bakersfield have to go to a failing school when they can take the money that that student gets and take it to another uh, charter school, private school, whatever education the parents want. They didn't like that bill. They didn't like my transparency bill. In the dead of night, my first year in session, they passed a bill through the budget process that took all the cap and trade dollars that's illegally collected from our, our businesses, and they shifted it to Delaware because Delaware is not open to the California Open Records Act. Right. So all of the money that is collected under cap and trade is, is housed in Delaware, and we have no, as citizens, we have no right to know what's being spent, how it's being spent, or where this money is going, and who's in charge of the money, because it's all closed. So so I introduced a bill to bring it back to California, and that died. I introduced a bill. I mean, I've introduced several bills that just don't ever seem to make it to the – my part-time legislature bill died. Let's see. Uh, you know, things that I promote don't really uh, make it past well, there. I don't think it's just you. It's probably any Republican bill. Um, there are dies. some Republicans that do get bills out. Uh, they name roads and streets and – Oh, you know, there are some and you know, there are some Republicans that do get bills out that are are decent and significant. I've um, never gone after some um if I, you're going to pass a bill and it costs thirty thousand dollars to run the bill through the building, why not make it a bill that is going to make a significant impact That's on the right. economic situation in our state? Speaking of the part-time legislature, not that we need one in California, God willing. Uh, where is that? Uh, right now we did not uh, gather enough signatures so if we did decide to do it again we would have to refile and start the signature process again Mike Reagan is very interested in it and so oh. are a lot of other people but yeah we're gonna have Mike on in a couple weeks are you uh-huh are He's we going to, yeah we're gonna He's talk gonna about be here that on the meeting. 24th yeah that's exactly why we're having him on but um, is this something we're looking at doing again yeah, there are, we have a lot of people discussing it and wanting to do it again. It, it is one big state, and to do a ballot measure, um, mm-hmm. it takes about a million dollars to qualify a ballot measure, so you got to run around the state raising money and gathering signatures, and it is a, it's a huge undertaking. What about the, chan- the transgender restroom law? You know, w- one thing I'm amazed at is that the media hasn't picked up on this. I mean, it's absolutely insane. You know, the the media, I don't know why they haven't picked up on it. The, it's just not a bathroom. You know, people focus on the bathroom bill, but if you look at the language, and let me, I'm, I'm going to... Paraphrase. Try to remember. Mm-hmm. Well, I can get pretty close, but it basically says it's one page long, and it basically in the last paragraph says that students may participate in school segregated program, school programs, athletics, and sport teams, and have use of all facilities, all facilities, um, in in consi- all facilities consistent with their gender identity, irrespective of the gender listed on the pupil's permanent record, meaning that. They can take showers together. They can use locker rooms. It's not just a bathroom bill. It's a it's a pretty significant bill. And if you want your kids to have privacy uh, as young girls in school, and this is a K through twelve bill, uh, you better start doing something about it and get on the referendum. So, for example, let's say Clay, you know, when he was in high school, decided he, you know, was not in touch Here with his comes. feminine side. So he decided he wanted to go out for girls volleyball and uh, decided to go to the women's restroom and change in the women's locker room and go out for women's volleyball, this law, law would allow him to do that. And it actually, it doesn't even, um, Clay doesn't even have to decide he wants to be feminine. Clay can just walk into the girls' locker room and they have no right to question him. It's discriminatory if they do. Amazing. It really is amazing. What, what I think is going to happen over time, if this continues, is you're going to see, they work so hard to get equal rights for women in sports that what's going to happen eventually is it's going to have the boys' team and then it's going to have the transgender team, which is going to be made up of boys. Well, you could actually have boys on the team. I mean, you don't That's you don't I mean. have to identify yourself as a transgender student. You, oh. it, the bill just, if you look at the language, it says you just can use, have all a- access to all facilities irrespective of what, what is on your permanent record. And there's a recall going on for this bill? There is a petition gathering process to get it on the ballot. Uh, the Family Resource Institute is putting mm-hmm. that together. Pacific Justice Institute is also helping. So there are petitions out there being circulated right now. Yeah, Pacific Justice has been a real friend of our show. Another bill that or proposition that's always been a target, it seems, is Proposition 13. Is anything going on with that, There's, either for commercial or residential? There are several pieces of legislation. There's a the couple that are on the governor's desk right now that um, if he signs them, it will lower the threshold for voting in the local local um, uh, county supervisor's area, so the local area. So basically, um, instead of two-thirds for tax increases on local levels, it'll be um, 55%, mm-hmm. which means that everybody who owns an apartment can raise taxes on people who own home or lives in an apartment rents an apartment can raise taxes on people who owns a home so they're defeating that prop 13 bit by bit and taking huge bites out of the apple 
You know, naturally, Shannon, we're out of time, and I'm looking at my list of things I wanted to talk about, high-speed rail, shale. Uh, <laughs> there's, just, there's just so much going we, we on. we got to support high-speed rail. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm kidding. Any, any second now, the building is going to open up and a light Swallow him, go. Right, swallow him whole. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to go through because of the legislature. Sure it is. Sure it is. Shannon, thank you so much for, for fighting the good fight. I mean, you do a great job, and I, I just I, I wish there were more people like you up there. Thank you. Thanks, Marty. Thanks, Clay. Hey, nice to have you, Shannon. Always <laughs> good to see you. It, it always is. <laughs> we'll be back in a couple of minutes on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk 1180.